Hi right, folks, hope you're doing well. <sighs> right, just gone for a little walk with a little puppy. Yeah. Well, I got the puppy last night, actually, well, yesterday. Um, Dad was a German Shepherd. Mum is crossed between a German Shepherd and a Malmut. So, yeah. Little boy. Yeah. So, yeah. Just took him for his first walk. He did very well. Seven weeks old, he did incredibly well. Yeah, he followed me all the way, ran after me. Um, then when it comes to steps, he went up the steps perfectly well. Struggled coming down, didn't like that at all, but then again, aren't we all the same? Yeah, we like to climb, but coming down, we're a bit more nervous about that. Yeah, <laughs> so, yeah, he's the same. Typical boy. Yeah, brave at going up, not so brave at coming down. There you go. Is what it is, but he's just having his breakfast. So yeah. Last night he was a bit of a whiny one, and then when I brought him up next to me, he just sat next to me and on the bed for the last sort of three hours of night time, and really made no fuss at all. So I'm guessing that's where he's going to be sleeping for most of the time. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Well, let's see what he needs, I suppose that's the thing yeah so anyway the other thing um i sent the video recently about um yeah the people from the church tell me how i'm wrong yeah there's a comment section so comment but then somebody called uh spay or username was spay was contacting me saying you know just leave folks alone they're not interested in what you have to say And how on earth is that constructive? You know, this is probably someone from church. I imagine that this is probably just someone from church. Yeah, and this is how they this is how they come back and tell you you're wrong. Yeah. Yeah, or or this is just someone who was He's trying to protect those in church because he felt that they weren't maybe adult enough to do it themselves. Um, or she felt they weren't adult enough to do it themselves. Which they are. And you know, had they not been protected to such a degree by idiot pastors, then they would be in a position where they'd be a damn sight stronger now. And able to deal with stuff now. The thing that gets in the way of people being able to handle things in life is overprotection. Well, we say that, don't we, about children. You know, if the parents are overly protective, then the children don't learn how to handle things. Well, we have the same situation in church. People in church don't know how to deal with conflict or how to deal with um, offence. Why? Because they've been overly protected from that. They've been treated is if they really are tiny baby sheep who have no capability whatsoever of looking after themselves. That's how the pastor sees the people of the church. That is not how God sees them. So that's what I say. I, I, I have no doubt whatsoever that the way that the church sees itself and the people in the church sees themselves and the way the pastor sees them, the teacher sees them, is nothing to do with how God sees them at all. No chance at all. The way God sees them is completely different. He sees you as powerful, as strong, as, you know, someone who can get over things and deal with things and use their light to help people, not stay in darkness. Well, he's still chomping away. <laughs> he's had a decent bowl of puppy food, so that's good. Yeah. Anyway, so, yeah, but it's like him. I've got to let him experience things in life. Yeah, I've got to challenge him. But things like, um, as I say, walking up steps. Today, as far as I know, it's the first time he's walked up steps. 
he certainly wasn't confident on it. Coming down steps, I've got steps here, going up to my bit of garden. And what I've been doing with him is you know, grabbing hold of him, putting his front steps down on the lower step, and then gently bring him down to his back steps, back legs go on the step, teach him how to do it. And then when I took him for a walk, the first few times he tried to do it, he was doing the same thing as I was doing. You know, slowly put his first legs down and then back legs down. <laughs> and then after that, he was jumping down. But then he was cheating after a while because he was still crying when he was going down the stairs. <laughs> yeah. But as I say, I've got to do that for his, for his sake, for his life. Otherwise, he's going to be a scared little baby who won't go away from my side at all, ever. Because he's scared of everything. And this is the point with leaders in church. People have got to be exposed because it's about trusting God. If these people belong to God, then you trust God with regards to what comes into that person's life. I say your job as a leader has to be yeah, help that person to understand that they need to be led and guided by the Holy Spirit, that they need God, and that the closer they are to God, the less the devil can impact them. If they understand that, and if they're living according to that, then nothing can come into their life unless God wants it. So just let God do what he wants to do. Instead of trying to wrap them in cotton wool and bubble wrap and making sure they don't ever get bumped or scraped or anything, you're not the worst kind of parents. But that's the way the church is. And it's like, okay, if that's the way the church is, then, yeah. Well, in the end, I just said to that person, that person wrote me a message, well, two messages, basically saying, people are not interested, so don't bother with them. Leave the folks alone, that sort of stuff. So, on my second message i said okay i'm gonna leave you to the devil because you've told me twice you're not interested you don't have to tell me the third time you tell me twice that's enough yeah well it's like the pastor of that church has told me twice that he can't handle conflict and he can't handle offense he doesn't know how to do it So as I say, he doesn't need to tell me again. That's why I did the video to say, if we ever have a conversation in the future, I'm going to be prepared. Because I'm going to know that there's going to be an agenda. Still quite a lot of food left. I think he's full. You've got a full belly. Have you? Was that good? You've got a full belly. Come up here now. Come on. There you go. You've got a full belly. There you go. Was it good? He's left quite like the food actually, which is good. That's fine. Isn't it? Hey, eh? how was that? Was that nice? There you go. Full belly. How's your little belly? Oh, that's a big fat belly. Look at that big fat belly. Eh? Have a tiny little baby. There you go. Now you can sleep. Now you can rest. You can be our walkies. It's quite good actually because you know on the way back from the walkies, there's a road that's really quiet. That I used to take, you know, any pups that Molly or Chewy, you know, uh, Amber or Lucy had. You know, I used to take them at the same place when they were about, um, you know, six and a half weeks old. To teach them how to walk with someone off the lead. And it's the same place. It's very, very quiet. So on the way back, I just run or gently run. And he has to run after me. And yeah, he, he knew what to do, didn't you? Hey, you knew what to do, and you were running, weren't you? Hey, oh, yeah, running properly. <laughs> oh, there you go, you've had nice food, you've got loads of food still left. So you can have that later, can't you? Hey? Yeah, well, you always get a bit more food for your breakfast, didn't you? Well, yeah, and they should always get more food for their breakfast because they haven't had food for all those hours, have they? So, yeah, they get their bit more food and the rest of the day just get top ups certainly puppies that's the best way to do it isn't it pup eh? I think you like it that way lots of food for breakfast don't you yeah right there you go 
So there you go, folks. I'll leave you to it. You take care. God bless. I'll speak to you soon. Yeah, give it a few weeks. I'll be doing videos with the little baby as we go for walks. I'm going to book him into the vets probably for Tuesday. And then it'll be two weeks after he'll have his second jab. So it'll probably be in about um, four weeks. Oh, actually, 24th Christmas Eve is when he'll probably go out for his first proper walk in Woodland area. Yeah. So that'd be cool. All right, so there you go. No, I'm looking forward to that. That would be good. So... Yeah, and this one is going to be an extra bit of joy. That's a certainty, aren't you? And his name is Bambini. For now. Yeah. His name is Bambini. At the moment, at the moment tiny Bambini. And when he's bigger, big Bambini. Because he's always going to be my baby. Well, because I picked the right one. Who wants cuddles and, you know, who wants to be with me all the time. Didn't I? Hmm? There you go. You take care. God bless. I'll speak to you soon. Bye-bye.